So there's big news in the Nintendo 64 emulation and reverse engineering scene, and it's one that immediately got my attention. It's called N64 Recompilation. The process can take any Nintendo 64 binary and statically recompile that binary into C source code that can then in turn be compiled for any target platform. It opens up the door for many N64 recompilation efforts and I'm happy to report there's already a few in the works. The static recompilation approach uses existing open source tools to provide the bulk of the heavy lifting and can remove literal years from a decompilation effort. Now I've spent the entire week testing out the tool for myself and I'm happy to report it all works as advertised and this thing is excellent. It could potentially transform the way that we play Nintendo 64 games on our PC. Let's go ahead and take a closer look after a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped, the global men's lifestyle brand that is revolutionizing the landscape of men's grooming. Now listen guys, I'm a Greek hairy bald man and grooming is something I take very seriously. I've used a ton of trimmers and grooming products over the years, but when Manscaped reached out and said, hey Demetrius, check out our performance package 5.0 Ultra, I decided to take a look. The star of the show is this bad boy here, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, the newest generation of already awesome line of Manscaped trimmers. The 5.0 Ultra takes care of all my grooming needs. It comes complete with two interchangeable blades. The Skin Safe Trimmer Blade never leaves my face with any cuts or scratches and features longer, wider, and rounded teeth that cut through hair with ease. But get this, Manscaped know what's up. And the 5.0 Ultra also comes complete with the skin safe foil blade that can be easily interchanged for that close shave. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra comes with an LED light, a rechargeable lithium ion battery, RPM technology, and the best part, it's waterproof. Now my grooming game doesn't stop there. I also use the Weed Whacker 2.0 to take care of all my ear and nose hair issues. And to round out the package, you'll get the Crop Soother Aftershave and the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant for that royal treatment. So what are you waiting for? Join the 10 million men worldwide who've put their confidence in Manscaped for all things grooming and hygiene. Head on over to manscaped.com and get your hands on the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra. And when you use my promo code MVG, you'll receive 20% off free international shipping and two free gifts. Link for everything is in the description below. Now the tool in question is known as N64 Recomp and it's been developed by Mr. Wise Guy and it does exactly what we said. It's a tool to statically recompile N64 games into native executables. But let's explain that in some more detail. Traditional N64 emulation uses a technique known as dynamic recompilation. This works by reading in machine code from the source platform, in this instance the N64 ROM, and emitting equivalent machine code for the target platform. Almost every N64 emulator out there uses this method, and the end result is that you can play just about any N64 game on any piece of hardware that has at least a 1 GHz processor. But this approach makes it more difficult to apply features to new games, for example, 60 FPS modes, 4K resolutions, widescreen support, changes like this usually require precision to ensure that no other parts of the game are impacted. And in some instances, there's simply no workaround. GoldenEye on the Xbox released last year to criticism that the developers didn't do enough. But this is really no fault of the developer. At the end of the day, emulation can only really take you so far when it comes to customization and enhancements. If we take a look at Mario 64 on the 3D All-Stars collection, many customers were confused as to why the game didn't run at any faster frame rate and why the game still used a traditional 4-3 aspect ratio. With emulation, developers can only do so much and that's why recompilation or decompilation efforts are really what's needed for this level of control. Of course, decompilation projects are not new and for many years, hobbyist developers have been working on various decomp projects. We've already seen Mario 64, Perfect Dark, and Ocarina of Time, for example, and there are others currently being worked. But these decompilation efforts can take literally years to complete, and the N64 recomp tool hopes to change all that. Now, it's important to note that static recompilation methods like this aren't new either. In fact, other previous N64 reverse engineering efforts have also used static recompilation methods, and this is also not exclusive to the Nintendo 64. And to prove his work, Mr. Wise Guy also released the Zelda 64 Recomp, the static recompilation of Majora's Mask for PC. And what we have here is quite incredible. Not only does it natively compile code for PC, 
For the graphics renderer, it uses the excellent RT64 effort by Dario Samo that's built with modern 3D graphics APIs, including DX12 and Vulkan. This means much larger resolutions than the native N64 res. I'm running this here at 4K on my PC. There's also support for widescreen and ultra-wide modes. Frames are interpolated to target 60 FPS or higher. There's even downsampling support and input latency is kept as low as possible. There are lots more features, but this is an impressive piece of work all around. And you can play Majora's Mask on your PC today. The project is 100% legal and doesn't come with any assets for the game at all. They are pulled directly from the Majora's Mask ROM that you have to supply separately. For the few hours that I played Majora's Mask, it ran flawlessly, and all the N64 frame buffer effects are in the game and fully working. There's also a very clever autosave system in the game that doesn't get in the way of the save slots at the beginning of the game. And if you don't care for the autosave, you can simply just turn it off. Now, because the N64 is cartridge based, loading times weren't ever really a thing, but the recompilation tool also has near instant loading times. And this is apparent when you switch to a new zone. There's also many options to customize controls, including gyroscope aiming. Now, I haven't tried an N64 control on this, but with a PS4 DualShock, it worked right out of the box with the button mappings exactly where I expected them to be. RT64 really opens up the potential for any recompilation to be fully enhanced with high frame rates, widescreen support, and with planned ray tracing and other features. We're talking about something transformative here. This does have the potential to change the N64 emulation scene as developers take advantage of Mr. Wiseguy's recomp tool. Many, many N64 games could see native ports much faster than we originally expected. Now, Mr. Wise Guy was also kind enough to share a few things with me here in the works. This is Banjo Tui. It's mostly a straight recomp that still requires polish, but this is a clip from Tui showing off some instant load times. Rocket Robot on Wheels is another work in progress that's showing off widescreen support. There is a little bit of pop in here because the game's frustum culling has still yet to be applied for the widescreen, but these features will undoubtedly come at a later stage. Now, of course, I decided to try this out for myself in more detail, so I took a stab at static recompilation of Mario Kart 64. Before you can perform any type of static recompilation, the ROM itself needs to be pulled apart and its entry point, list of functions, and OS calls need to be determined. And right now, any N64 ROM needs to be in ELF binary format for the N64 recomp tool to do its thing. And this part can obviously take some time, and it's quite a manual process. But an experienced N64 reverse engineer can do this easily enough. But once you do have these pieces, then yes, Narelle's example in his video is entirely accurate. I did test this myself with Mario Kart 64, and I will admit I did cheat a little bit and generate the information necessary by getting it from the already existing decompilation project. But once I had the entry point correct and the ELF binary, the tool ran in seconds, just like his example. And better still, this C code can be then loaded into a compiler like Visual Studio and compiled up. Mario Kart 64 compiled up easily with no errors here except for link errors. And this is because work now needs to be done to set up this game and tie it into a graphics API like RT64. And basically starting from nothing and reading some documentation and understanding how the process works from building the source code in Visual Studio after the recompilation tool was run only took me about two to three hours of my time. Now the way the N64 recomp tool works at a very high level is that it takes advantage of another open source tool known as Rabbitizer, and this is a MIPS instruction decoder API and it will generate matching assembly for any MIPS instruction that you throw at it. Now, I've never personally used Rabbitizer before, so I did ask Mr. Wiseguy how Rabbitizer is applied to the N64 recomp tool. The Rabbitizer handles instruction decoding. It extracts operands and determines which opcode the instruction has. Now, normally, Rabbitizer will omit assembly language code, as stated by the documentation on the GitHub page. But for the recomp tool, Mr. Wiseguy was able to omit an almost one-to-one one mapping of equivalent C code for each assembly language opcode. And if you take a look at the generated C code, if you pick anyone at random, you can see that there is a very distinct path that these functions take. 
there is in the comments the assembly language code and then the C code equivalent is underneath. Now there is a lot more complexity when it comes to things like branching instructions. Now once the Rapidizer proof of concept was up and running and working, the next thing to do was to hook in RT64 up into a game to see if it would work that way. And this particular technique obviously worked very well, especially as we can see here with the Majora's Mask recompilation. Now anyone is able to download and use the N64 recomp tool and I definitely recommend that you take a look at it yourself. Now links will be available in the description for everything and as mentioned it does require some N64 reverse engineering experience but there will be future updates that do provide better documentation and tutorials on how to use the tool which right at this point is a little difficult to follow along with if you don't know what you're doing. But what is already here is incredible and I think that it's something that not only will be used by the hobbyist programmers and the community out there, but I can also see a market for licensed Nintendo 64 games coming back commercially for modern consoles by using the N64 recomp tool to generate native C code on the target hardware. It's simply that good. And with the ongoing development effort of the RT64 project, you can start to get a sense of why the N64 recomp project is very exciting. Now the question is, will this recompilation method replace existing N64 emulators or even existing decompilation projects? The answer is no. There are use cases and needs for each of these methods. And I don't believe recompilation will supersede decompilation projects, which do offer much more in terms of customization and features. Just take a look at, for example, the Ocarina of Time decomp project. There's almost a granular level of options that you can configure. And existing N64 emulation is still very much relevant now and in future for both the community and commercially. If we take a look at the NSO, for example, N64 Recomp is just another tool in the bag of tricks for developers to determine their approach. And I think that's entirely awesome. I do fully expect to see more Recomp showing up from now on, and I simply can't wait. And I do want to give a huge thanks to Mr. Wise Guy for reaching out, answering my questions about the Recomp project, and I do wish the project well. I simply can't wait to see how this evolves. I think that this is transformative. But we are going to leave it here for today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. As always, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye for now.